Now a hearing on breast cancer research, prevention, and treatment. A Senate Appropriations Subcommittee yesterday heard testimony from officials with the National Cancer Institute, the American Cancer Society, and other groups on legislation to improve access to breast cancer screenings and other issues. Pennsylvania Senator Arlen Specter chaired the hour and a half hearing. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Precisely 9.30 on this 9.30 hearing of the Subcommittee on Labor, Health, Human Services, and Education will commence. We have one of our most important hearings of the year today, and that is the hearing on breast cancer. Uh, this subcommittee, as I think is generally known, has taken the lead on increasing the funding for the National Institutes of Health. I frequently say, because I think it to be true, that the NIH is the crown jewel of the federal government, and I sometimes add to the displeasure of some, perhaps the only jewel in the federal government. And uh, Senator Tom Harkin and I have taken the lead on funding for NIH, crossing party lines, because I learned a long time ago that if you want to get anything done in Washington, you have to be willing to cross party lines. And the Senate passed a resolution, 98 to nothing, to double the funding of the NIH in five years. But the Senate is cancer is, uh, well, just put it, there is no more important issue on medical research than, uh, than breast cancer. And it has competitors with ovarian cancer and prostate cancer and lymphoma and heart ailments and uh, many other maladies. But uh, uh, it has claimed the lives of one woman out of nine. Uh, there have been an enormous increase in funding. I'll put those statistics into the record, not to take too much time now. Lead witness is uh, Dr. Richard Klausner, appointed director of the National Cancer Institute in August of 1995. He's been here on many, many occasions and been on the circuit, and I thank him for a trip he made to Pennsylvania, Philadelphia not too long ago. Prior to that appointment, Dr. Klausner served as chief of the cell biology and metabolism branch of the NIH child health and human development. He began his career at NIH in 1979 after postgraduate work at Harvard, has his undergraduate degree from Yale and his medical degree from Duke University. He's accompanied by Dr. James Marks, the director of the National Center for Chronic Disease Prevention and Health Promotion of the Centers for Disease Control, where he has held numerous positions over the past 25 years. An adjunct associate professor at Emory, received his undergraduate degree in psychology from Williams, MD from University of New York at Buffalo, and his MPH from Yale University. Thank you for joining us today, gentlemen, and Dr. Klausner will turn to you. I want to briefly do right now is to actually demonstrate uh, some of the fruits of this support for research beginning by one measure, and that is just what is happening to mortality rates from breast cancer. Up until 1990, each year, mortality rates were rising in this country. 1991 to 1995, historically, for the first time, we saw mortality rates dropping by about 1.6% per year, and that is now accelerating to about 3.5% per year. We expect it to continue. We expect it to accelerate. Even if it stopped at this level but continued over the next 10 years, that would mean a 30 to 40 percent drop in the mortality rate from breast cancer. We've achieved good dissemination of our best early detection tool, mammography, which you'll hear about, but mammography is far from perfect, and to really affect early detection, we need new, really new approaches. We've incrementally approved survival, but with relatively toxic and, with a few exceptions, not specific treatments. It's likely that we can continue to make these incremental improvements, and we must make sure that all women have access to prompt and state-of-the-art treatment. But if we're going to do better, and we can and must, we must switch our treatment approach so that we know the different types of breast cancer to treat each as a distinct disease, and we must now develop new treatments based upon the molecular machinery of each type of breast cancer. So now we'll do a four-minute um, molecular biology lesson in breast cancer. Uh, for 100 years, we've diagnosed breast cancer. As you see on the left, under the microscope, abnormal cells. That's pretty much what we knew. That's not what cancer is. Cancer is a disease of molecular alterations. For the first time now, at the beginning of the 21st century, we can switch from looking under the microscope alone to reading genes. And what you see there is a gene chip 
to read the true molecular profile and discern the true molecular nature of breast cancer, there's about 30,000 genes on that little penny-sized chip. And so what we've done is we've challenged the community with an $80 million program, actually called the Director's Challenge, to redefine breast cancer. And you see the result of that chip, one experiment, 50,000 data points. And what happens is that it turns out, as we suspected, breast cancer, while looking the same under the microscope, is at least, next slide, six different diseases. We could not know this before about nine months ago. It's hard to read this. Take my word, it's six different diseases. The most important thing is all of these differences when corrected for the exact same stage of disease, which today has been the best way of predicting outcome, now when you discern the true molecular differences between totally different diseases that we're all lumping as breast cancer, we see entirely different outcomes from one type having a zero three-year survival to another type having a 95% three-year survival. Next slide. What will this mean? First of all, we need to switch to thinking about these as molecular diseases and as distinct diseases. As you've heard me talk about, we've gone in one generation from cancer being a black box to then through research drawing the circuitry of cancer. But with that circuitry, we don't stop. It is this circuitry that provides the new and truly revolutionary targets for therapy against these different diseases. And now you'll see what's happened. From that circuitry, on the next slide, we see all of the pieces of the circuitry that we know so far to be altered in different types of breast cancer. And already in green are the list of all of the drugs that are already entering clinical trials just in the last couple of years that are now directed against each of those points of the circuitry. I can't tell you how much this is a complete change from the sledgehammer approach to the black box of cancer of, of, that we've lived with for too long. Next slide. We can see how quickly we've moved from identifying the targets here, classifying them in a new way. 15 classes of molecular targets in breast cancer. 68 individual targets identified specifically. And now, already, 130 trials supported by the NCI and industry. Now you see directed against all of these targets. It is these therapies that you've heard me talking about for several years. The difference is, five years ago, if I would have drawn this, it basically would have been blank. 130 trials. 68 different targets, about 85 agents. This is the immediate effect of all of this research you've supported. And we now know that each of these targets are not present in breast cancer per se, but in these different molecular forms, which for the first time with these brand new technologies that have been now developed and disseminated to the research community will allow us for the first time to think about the right treatment for the right disease. And I'll stop there and turn now to Dr. Marks. Thank you very much for joining us, Dr. Marks, and providing the uh, uh, two front war from uh, NIH and CDC. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm especially pleased to be here today to talk with you about CDC's National Breast and Cervical Cancer Early Detection Program. It's in its 11th year of providing free mammograms and pap smears to low income American women. This program has saved lives and raised the consciousness of Americans everywhere about the importance of screening. And I especially want to uh, put our program in context with what you've just heard from Rick. When the research is done, it needs to get out and get out quickly to the American public, to those in great need. As he described, we know how to save many of the deaths that now occur from breast cancer. Mammography is currently the single most effective method for diagnosing breast cancer early. And the longer the breast cancer remains undetected and untreated, the greater the likelihood it will spread and eventually result in death. We fund programs in all 50 states, the six U.S. territories, and in 12 Native American and Alaska Native uh, tribal organizations. In addition, we provide health education to the public, to health professionals, and uh, pay for a variety of the medical procedures that need to confirming diagnosis. Through September of 2000, we have provided over 3 million screenings, about 1.4 million of those are mammograms, and about 9,500 women have been diagnosed with breast cancer through the program and helped to find prompt treatment. 